Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel or Instagram TV. Uh, we're gonna do another training review. This is from this past Friday, which was 628. We got some deficit deadlifts. We've got some uh, standing press this time with the football bar or Swiss bar and some more high bar back squats because it's the internet. Uh, and we got Tom and Leah for some important questions at the end, which we're gonna need you to weigh in on as well. So let's get into the training video and go from there. All right, so this is uh, about a two inch deficit. Those are two mats that I'm standing on. This is 500 and we're gonna do these four sets of eight. Now, I don't use a belt on most of my supplemental pulls, but I do use straps on most of my supplemental pulls unless I'm getting close to a meet. Again, the idea is I don't wanna beat my hands up um, and I don't use a belt because it helps limit the uh, amount of fatigue that I'm subjecting myself to. Um, and so we're doing sets of eight here. This is 500 again, and actually I'm pretty happy with these. So just kind of my coaching assessment, I'm looking at my knees, making sure there's not an extreme like valgus off the floor, and there's not. Um, we'll go again here to the second set. This is still 500. Uh, I did a bad job framing myself for the shot, but we can look again at my legs. Just watch the knees as they come off the floor. Just, that's a little bit there, but that's that's pretty okay. Uh, you know, looking at this closely, I'd probably turn my heels in a little bit and try to force my knees out. Um, I'm happy with my thoracic extension. I'm happy with my back angle. Um, as far as a grip position, I think what you'd like to do is have the narrowest grip that you can use without interfering with your legs, without dragging up your legs. So I, I actually grab right at the start of the knurling, which is like 16 and a half inches apart on a standard power bar. Uh, and for me, I like to look out a, quite a bit further with my eye gaze compared to my uh, squat. Now, this is the money coaching angle. So that uh, pull is very good. That was directly over the midfoot. That one was a little forward. Uh, this one is directly over the midfoot. Again, I can just look at it. That one's forward. I'm watching the York logo kind of move. That one was a little better, but uh, still slightly forward. Um, that one was okay. I should have locked that out a little bit more. Again, this is just, these are just things that I do. That one, I could have held my back quite a bit better. The, uh, the lumbar spine's fine, but the thoracic spine is what I'm looking at. So there's just that little thing that goes on there. Uh, but overall, for sets of eight, I did four sets of eight at 500. Um, and I thought I was okay with that. Now here are some football bar presses. I'm using a football bar because it's much different than a regular press for me. And so using this in a developmental block, I feel like I get a little bit more general development than something I'm good at skill wise. So I think this is, let's see, so that's one, I think that's only 155. And a little message. I, I don't care about the layback. The idea, though, is that this movement is way forward of the sh center of the shoulder joint um, at the bottom compared to a regular press, which is only slightly forward. And then here, uh, I get to just use a novel sort of pressing movement um, to help drive up the press. So I can press 300 this year. Uh, I don't see any big form flaws here. It's just since it's such a new movement, the weight is quite light, um, and I'll I'll just move up this next week. Yeah, these are okay. Uh, so just looking at this, oh, that one's forward. Notice my heels came off the ground uh, a little bit there. Eh, it's okay. But yeah, this is just what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, you know, is my weight balanced? Am I pushing it overhead? Am I finishing the press? Nice shrug, crowd goes crazy. So anyway, I did four sets of eight, and then I'm only showing you my first two sets of, it's supposed to be 12, again, I can't count. So I widen my stance um, and I, I really don't tolerate squatting with a wide stance anymore as much as I, I used to. And I, I don't know if it's because I had this symptomatic uh, hip uh, labral tears that popped up a few years ago from squatting on an uneven surface. Uh, in any event, wider stance, I can definitely be more vertical and you know it looks better. So I think the internet's gonna be happy. You know, this is only 225, but my stance is quite, quite a bit wider. Um, I, I looked at these videos before I started recording this and uh, I think a few towards the end end up being like right at parallel, which I'm not concerned about. I've never been called on depth in my entire life uh, at a meet, so I'm okay with that. It's just, you know, when the weight's light, you can get lazy. But, you know, there's a better elbow position, more vertical um, for me with the high bar squat. I don't have a, a really long torso and my femurs are quite long, so I do bend over quite a bit. Uh, in any event, these are fine, 225. I did these with a little uh, a 202 uh, tempo. Went up to 275, got rid of the tempo, and I ended up doing three more sets of 12 here. 
Um, these are okay. Again, the problem is it bothers my hips, and I did notice quite a bit more hip pain. Um, uh, you know, not, not a lot, but it's just one of those things I have to watch. So I think it's an okay variation. I just need to watch how I work these back in. And I don't know necessarily, you know, where the hip labrum tears occurred <laughs> as far as like in my history, probably from racing motorcycles or just over time, it does tend to happen. Um, and they're asymptomatic when I have a narrower stance, but that does compromise what goes on with my back angle. In any event, uh, these are okay. I'll probably move up a little bit this next week with this little wider stance, high bar squat for a supplemental lift. I can't count. And now for some commentary from Tom and Leah. Here's prompt. Who is saltier? Dr. Austin Baraki or Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum, formerly known as soon to be Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. So Austin has a more kind of resigned character to his saltiness, whereas yes. Jordan is okay, more like deeply cynical. <laughs> so I think I think it's I think it's Feigenbaum. Oh wow. Wow, that's See, a... I still think I'm I am leaning towards Baraki, even after thinking about it for two days. Yeah, yeah, I, I might have to I might have to give Jordan a nod on this one. Okay, so you guys get to decide who is saltier, Austin or myself. Drop a comment below and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.